everybody. Welcome live to the Gym Masters Show, Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. Your host, Jim Masters, here in the host chair, reporting for duty as always. Entertain, inspire, have some good times with you as well. We're here in the New York area, the United States. Hey, did you feel that earthquake? I didn't, but a lot of people did. I guess there was an earthquake today in the Northeast, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. Quite amazing. The world is a crazy place, but that's why you come here because we sort of break it all down. We calm it. We settle it with good conversations with our celebrity friends and guests who stop by the Gym Master Show. And I'm so honored and excited, if you can't tell, to have one of our favorites back with us here. This is the trifecta. This is her third time and there's a very special reason why she's here well she wanted to be here anyway she likes stopping by the gym master show and lovely hall to say hi but she's working on some really cool things and you may remember we had just a few weeks ago and if you missed this very amazing episode with anson williams and his lovely wife, writer Sharon Williams. Anson, of course, you know, Patsy Weber on Happy Days and so much more. Sharon is a brilliant writer, husband and wife. They were with us just a few weeks ago. We talked about Happy Days' 50th anniversary and so many other incredible things. It was very deep, uh, meaningful, fun, fabulous conversation with uh, Anson and Sharon. And also the play that uh, Sharon has written and that Anson is directing and starring the incomparable Lee Purcell. Yes, iconic actress, film, television, stage, and so much more. She is starring in this incredible production, and we are very, very excited. They, they've all teamed up, Lee and uh, Anson and Sharon, to present something very special called Crazy Mama, which we're going to tell you about, and we'll have Lee sort of sprinkle in some of the background. But here's a little bit. It's laced with humor and pathos. Crazy Mama is a true story adapted from Sharon Scott Williams' award-winning memoir. Of course, that is Anson Williams' lovely wife. The new one-woman show stars Lee Purcell, who is our guest right now here on the show, coming to us from the West Coast. We had an earthquake. She had hail. I mean, I think it's flipped around. Shouldn't we have the hail? Does she have the earthquake? Uh, this chronicle is the soul-crushing grip of uh, Sharon's mother's mental illness, the steely resilience of the human heart, and how, by the grace of some invisible power, Sharon's dream to get her real mama back comes true. Her story begins when she rushes home after school a couple of days after her eighth birthday to get the last slice of cake. Instead, she witnesses her mother having a knife wielding psychotic break the sheriff deputy says your mom is not right in the head and uh but sharon still loved her it's really an amazing story and again our friend lee purcell who returns to the gym masters show series is starring in it and it's going to be happening uh in just about a week or so in new york at the uh, site where woodstock Yes, Woodstock was. Matter of fact, let's put this on the screen for you right now so you can get uh, an opportunity to find out about it. It's called Crazy Mama, a true story of love and madness starring two-time Emmy nominee Lee Purcell with blues man Luke. Yes, he's going to be there as we talked about when uh, Sharon and Anson were here. Sharon wrote it and uh, Anson Williams is directing it. It's going to be really cool. We're going to tell you how you can get some tickets as well and there's another great shot a little bit more about it it's the uh 12th through the 14th and it's going to be amazing and here's a cool shot hot off the presses there is anson and lee and sharon sort of behind the scenes putting it together rehearsing anson directing it's going to be really special that's a great shot of lots and lots of talent there, folks. And uh, there is Lee doing her thing, getting ready to take on that role. And it's going to be amazing. Now, of course, our illustrious guest, in addition to doing this, wow, I mean, she's she's done everything. There she is with the incomparable Steve McQueen. Look at all these amazing shots we dug up of her from film and television. She is truly an iconic figure. She's been on our screens for quite some time, gracing us with her wit and wisdom and beauty and her incredible intelligence. And there she is, of course, with Kenny Rogers and Richard Thomas. I mean, you think of the show, you think of the movie, there she is with Matt Damon. She's been a part of it. And look at this wonderful, uh, fabulous grouping of lovely ladies. All of these ladies 
have been guests, beautiful and wonderful and fun guests here on the Gym Masters Show. To the left, the incomparable Anne Margaret. She was with us recently. Lee Purcell, of course, has been with us. Allison Arngrim, as they're celebrating 50 years of Little House on the Prairie, she's been with us a couple of times. And Rosalind Kine was just with us maybe two weeks ago. It's her second visit with us here on the show. Uh, really incredible. They're all friends. They all have a good time. And there's Donna Pascal. Remember, she was Angie. She was also in Saturday Night Fever, John Travolta's girlfriend. She's going to be with us in a couple of weeks. Just, just a little preview there as well. Also, Lee is in Closer Magazine. We're going to talk about that. Yep, that's happening right now. Then there was this wonderful Gene Autry tribute and so much more that's hot off the presses. A lot of cool things that she's been doing. But as I mentioned, she's been doing this for a number of years. And you can go back and watch. We save the uh, episodes on our YouTube channel, Jim Master Savings. You can go back and watch the epic episodes where we really go over Lee's career. Two-time primetime Emmy nominee. She recently completed the film feature, uh, The Plight starring as twin sisters in this dystopian science fiction story set in the not too distant future. And she worked uh, along four young actors too during that. And um, the first being for Long Road Home, that was the first of the primetime Emmy nominations starring opposite Mark Harmon. Harmon, you know, she's worked with all of them. Uh, she's worked with Bo Bridges, Mark Harmon, uh, Lewis Gossett Jr., who we just lost recently and so many others, and um, she's just iconic. Again, you can go back and watch the other episodes where we've talked about her legendary career. A lot of people uh, that are chiming in. Welcome, everybody. If you want to comment during the show, subscribe to the YouTube channel, Jim Master TV. You can comment in our lovely hall chat room. But first, without further ado, let's welcome our very special guest back to the Jim Master Show, the incomparable Lee Purcell is here. Lee, welcome to the show, my friend. It's so nice to be back here for the third time. Becta, huh? <laughs> Thank you. I, mean, I didn't get thrown out. <laughs> Thank you so much. You always have a home here. And as I said, we kept the porch light on for you. Oh. What I can't believe is earthquake, East Coast, hail, West Coast. What the heck's going on here? Crazy. You know, I mean, you know, friends of mine started saying, you know, on the East Coast started saying, well, we got an earthquake. You're not here yet. But, you know, we have an earthquake. And I'm like... Well, what what matter you 4.8 and i'm like oh child's play never mind i live in california rumble <laughs> it's nothing it's like oh is that a yeah it's a 4.8 but i do understand in new york that it's it's different because our buildings for the last i don't know ever since people got smart about building things are on rollers or my house is on rollers uh you can't see them of course but they're there and and uh, retrofitted and so but there, I, I do have a bit of concern about it, and I'm going through just a few days, but uh, because you know they're not built uh, to withstand earth earthquakes. Now our houses are not built to withstand hurricanes and typhoons and tornadoes, although I think they would. Uh, but and then just as I was hearing about the the earthquake in in New York, then I I hear this noise at my house, and I'm like what is that? Is somebody trying to break in? And, and I look out the window and there's like huge pieces of hail. This is April. It's California. We don't have, we, we do get hail sometimes in maybe January, but this was huge pieces. And my dog was going crazy. Like mom, what's that? What's that? You know? So I don't so know. You were transported to Denver, Colorado, I guess, huh? Denver, which I love. I do happen to love Denver. So there you go. That's the strange Things we're living with. Now. See, the earthquake was timed wrong, as I told you off air. That was, I guess, supposed to happen next week as sort of a make you feel at home welcome. <laughs> yes. Yes. I go, oh, an earthquake. Oh, I feel so much better now. So, you know, we got a solar eclipse in between on Monday. <laughs> now what? The locusts. Don't look up. <laughs> Don't look up. Look, no. That's the one day look down. <laughs> look down. No. No. How have you been since we chatted last? I mean, every time that we chat, you always have some fresh news, exciting things. You're always so so busy and you're always involved in so many incredible things. How have you been since we chatted last late? So good to see you. I, I've been great. I've been I've been terrific. Um, I'm very excited about doing this play, Crazy Mama, with my good friends Anson and Sharon. And it's going this is going to be the first of many many cross fingers 
uh, many um, performances. And, and we're all very, there we are, and we're all very excited about it. That's our rehearsal space there that you're looking at. That's not, of course, where we'll be performing because this is in California. But there I am doing some kind of movement. My hands are definitely moving. So, <laughs> so some kind of movement. And, uh, and we're very, we're really very excited about it. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. It's going to be and you're crazy. You're cooking, which is like. Yes. Uh, yeah. Be on top of the hot fudge Sunday. That's you know? it. We'll be there on the Saturday. We're looking forward to that, uh, the 13th. And it's going to be wonderful to see you and everybody and uh, have a really good time and root you guys on and cheer you on. And and this was, I mentioned just a little bit of a teaser, but this was really uh, part of or based on Sharon Anson's wonderful uh, writer and wife, um, her memoir, right? Yes, yes. Yeah, Sharon had a very uh, challenging um growing up and then past growing up because her mother, as you mentioned, had a mental illness. She had a, a psychotic break one day out of the blue. Otherwise she was a, a perfectly normal, happy, healthy 1950s housewife and mom and had a great family and everything was wonderful. And and then suddenly, like you, you mentioned, you said some of my lines, actually, you know, it's, it's all the lines are mine. So why not? I and, got the facts first. <laughs> maybe. And, um, and, and I get, I, I have so many lines I can spare, you know, several hundred, uh, yeah. 14,000 words. Yikes. And, um, and then anyway, Sharon came home from school and uh, very excited about having her last piece for her birthday cake, as you mentioned. And mm. there was her mother having a psychotic break, which she never came out of. And mm. even though she she uh, she was institutionalized for a while, and then she uh, was was at home, uh, and she managed to to live. And she was there and she was home and, and uh, present for her family, somewhat present and, and then didn't, didn't, uh, come to until, like you said, two weeks uh, before she died, which is, which is really a huge blessing when you think about it. And I think about this play as a story of family. And, and what does a family do when there's a catastrophe, mm. where there's a, a, a huge problem? Because just because it affected her doesn't mean it didn't affect everybody else in the family because it did. Just like when any family, one one member is affected, they're all affected, and it, it's not it's not limited to some type of psychotic break. Thank God. No. But it can be anything. It can right. be you know someone dies, somebody's a terrible accident. Um, it can be anything. You know somebody fails at something, and it affects the entire family. And and that's what this for me. That's what this is about. It's how does that family cope with that situation? How do they survive it? Do they stay together as a family? And that is, I think, a big question. And are they, are they normal? Do, are they ever, do they ever become their normal? Like, because everybody has a different normal. Uh, or do they ever become their normal again, depending on the situation? So to me, that is what this story is about. It's about family. And early on, when Sharon and I were talking, I asked her, because I always like to know in a project what is in the writer's head as the theme mm -hmm. of the piece. And I said, so what is what is the theme of, of Crazy Mama? And we talked about back and forth. And she said, it is love. Love enables hope to survive. And I thought, wow, that's really profound, you know, because it does, it, it definitely does. And, um, and, and so that, that's kind of my, my journey with this. When, when you first heard about it, when you, they approached you about it, mm -hmm. um, cause I, I, I know, I mean, the, the fit is fabulous. Um, and, and I know that you're going to knock it out of the park and it will, 
grow okay. and will, you know, cause you, when you do something, you take it on and you give 110%. Um, when you first heard about it, what were some, in addition to what you just shared with us, what are some additional things that resonated with you that got you to say, you know what, I really want to do this. I want to be a part of this, whether or not Sharon or, and Anson are friends of mine or not. I just really want to help tell this story. What was it about it that resonated and clicked with you? Well, there were so many things, uh, really so many. And that doesn't happen very often. You know, sometimes there'll be a few things, but this is so many levels for me personally. And um, I, I saw a staged reading of Crazy Mama in Hollywood at the Hollywood Museum. And it was, and I, you know, and I went with my pr producing partner, who's, who's also a very good friend of mine. And he's like a tough guy. You know, he looks like a boxer or something. You know, he's like a tough, toughy, and very smart, fabulous actor, fabulous director, everything. And um, you should interview him someday. He's really something. Love to, yeah. yeah. You'd love him. He's really. You'd have a lot in common, actually. And um, and I and I and I, and and the tears are just streaming down my face, right? And I look over to Michael, Michael Carnegie, and he's like crying. I mean, full on crying. And I thought. Wow, this is mm. this is not it, this is not limited to a particular gender or a type of person, right? This is this is very universal. This is a universal type of of play, and so I went up to Sharon and because I've known you know I've known Anza many years and and have gotten to know Sharon and adore her uh, since she has been with Anza, which is a few years now, and. Um, I went up to Sharon and I said, you're going to win the Pulitzer Prize for this. Wow. You are, because I think she is. I mean, if all the ducks are in the right row, whatever, you know, but I, I'm telling you, it is that good. And, and then, um, and then I started because I spent some of my growing up years in the South. And even though I don't sound like it and whatever, but I do in the play, let me tell you. So, um, and I knew these people. I knew it, not these specific real life people, Yeah. but there are archetypes in the play that I knew that I grew up with and am very familiar with those types of people. And so, and I, and I told her at the time, I said, you know, you got that down, you, the area, cause she came from Virginia and I was in nine different places, but, but she came from Virginia and, um, and, and we talked about that a great deal, about, about those types of people. And, and I mean, it's interesting because there's the aunt who is, I mean, my aunts were all wonderful. I mean, that's the truth. You know, I'm not cherry coding. They actually were, and I miss them. Um, but uh, there's the aunt in the play, and, and she's not particularly nice. In fact, she's really awful. And then there's the other aunt who is the, kindest sweetest most wonderful person and and it, the list goes on and i don't know if you know this but in the play i play 16 people tell us about that that's really <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah and, and we thought sally field mastered that with civil i mean <laughs> 16 um and a half what left. is that like doing that that's quite a well undertaking it, it's really fun, and and it it is quite an undertaking, as you said, and um, it is very challenging. And because, as you mentioned, I did a film in January playing twins, and I thought that was kind of a challenge. And now I'm looking at that and going, "That was nothing," you know. That now, was a dry run. <laughs> it was a dry run in, into this. Yeah. And um, even though that was hard, but yeah. This is, yeah, and it's not like I'm doing impressions or impersonations. That's no. not what this is. You're taking on the actual character, yeah. Well, I'm taking on the character, yeah, but it's not like I, the structure of the play, you know, I'm on I'm on the stage the entire time. I'm the only actor. So, you know, I've got to be there. And then we have a fabulous um, blues guitarist that actually has changed. I, I saw the, what you were posting there. And um, and we now have James Jackson oh, instead fantastic. of 
instead of Luke. Right. That so is we, a late breaking update update from Lee herself. Breaking. Yes. <laughs> she saved it just for our show. <laughs> I wanted to let you know we have James Jackson. Got the scoop. <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. And he is a, a wonderful singer. He's a, a blues guitarist. He plays harmonica. He's a cellist. You know, he's wow. very talented. Multi-talented, yeah. He has a few lines, you know, here and there, but, you know, all that is really my problem. <laughs> and right. uh, so his problem is the music. Mine is, you know, being 16 different people. And, and it is, I really like it because it's, I have never seen this done before. Never. I mean, I, I've seen all the different wonderful plays and movies and TV shows where people were portraying different characters. But, you know, they're in different scenes. They're in different costumes. They're, I'm, it's me. And so yeah. I, some of my favorite scenes are when I'm being four different characters and they're all talking to each other. It's me talking. That's incredible. Me. Talking to me, being yeah. Patty, being Sharon, being the sheriff. And all how, these. Characters. How do you remember it? I'm sure the, the, the viewers are saying, "How does she remember when to come in and come out, and the lines and the structure and the very flow?" Yeah. Be honest, it's very, very yeah, hard. That's got to be really hard. And um, I haven't had the script that long, so it is it is hard. And um, the characters, uh, for some reason, are they're not easy. That is for sure because they are. Yeah different genders, different ages, different mm. types of people, different eras of accents, um, because everybody has an accent. All, all my all my 16 friends, now have they all have uh, various uh, types of Southern accents. And, and what's really fascinating is that the older people have a much stronger, thicker accent than the younger people. Mm. The reason for that is because people who were, I don't know, say in the 50s, they are now 35, they're 40, they're 50, right? They grew up before television existed. So they didn't have that that influence yeah. of, of the standard American speech, which most, most television, with the exception of people who are doing accents and most people from that era had, they never heard people speak from other places unless they traveled a great deal, right? right. Unless, unless on radio, which of course, you know, I produce a radio show, but unless on radio, uh, back in the golden age of radio, they heard radio, but that was either standard American speech, and that's all with capital letters, or that was mid-Atlantic, uh, mm -hmm. speech, which I'm sure you're familiar with that. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, and there were very few accents. There were there were some. It was there was a lot of kind of wow, kind of people talking, you know, like that, right? But but for the most part, it was standard American. It was mid Atlantic. So they didn't grow up hearing um, people uh, a lot speak in a different way from them, unless it was on the radio. So you had that generation. Then the next generation, you know, which I also uh, do them. The next generation, I'm playing an eight-year-old boy, an eight-year-old girl, um, so forth. Um, the next generation, though, they did have television. So their accents were less. Still had accents, but they were less. And then you move into the internet generation, which is not in this play. But that's why a lot of, a lot of the wonderful, you know, spicy, flavorful accents are gone. And, and that's kind of a shame. Mm. So playing 16 is, mm. it, it's, it's, uh, it's pretty different. It's not a one woman play. It's you and 15 others. <laughs> Just about. <laughs> it, it is. And that's what Anson always is, is teasing me about. Like, you know, are your, are your 16 friends here? And I'm like, you're right. they're here. <laughs> and so if you see her talking to herself in Ralph's supermarket, folks, Lee's not having an episode. She's rehearsing. <laughs> I'm rehearsing. I'm not having lost it. <laughs> rehearsing. And yeah, or driving because I keep a, a recorder with, or a type of a recorder with me and I play it because, you know, in LA we drive a lot. And, and so I get to, I, I get to play it. I just hope a police officer doesn't stop me and go, what's going on here? 
Now, what's going on here? Because I saw you talking to yourself, right. but you didn't have a let's phone. Check, let's check the glove box. Check, <laughs> check everything. So, so yeah, this is uh, a lot of fun. It's a great gift. It's a wonderful gift uh, as an actress. And um, and I love working with Anson and Sharon because we we are a trio. And, uh, and that's really great. And we have a lot of fun. And it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. And, and Anson's have... directing, which is kind of exciting too, huh? Well, he's, you know, Anson has he's been, been doing this for years. For years. He's done over 300 television shows. That's right. Or plays. Uh, you know, he's, and a lot of people don't know that because they just think of, oh, Potsy. From, Happy days and everything. Yeah. Of course, wonderful and, um, and great. And who didn't watch it? And, but what people don't know is that when he was doing Happy Days, he'd also already started directing as a kid, you know, right. as a young, a young, a young on. and he started directing, he and Ron Howard. That's and, right. you know, um, so Anson is, is has been a, a, a very a very successful director and then of course sharon i don't know if you know this but sharon um and i i reference it a little bit in the play not much and and but it's a little bit in there but sharon at a at a, at a young age but became um an ad exec advertising executive mm -hmm. in New York. i don't know if she talked about that did she i think a little bit yeah well she broke the glass ceiling because she was, I think, the first, one of the first uh, female creative direct directors at an advertising executive when it was very sexist. Yeah. And, you know, and women were, you know, think of Mad Men, all the women were back there typing, yes, boss, yes, boss. Can but I get your coffee and all that? Yeah. Coffee, you know, but but she was the boss. And, and it was a major advertising firm which I can't remember what it was called, but it, it's still, I think it's still very big. So she has always been very, very creative. And, but then it was in commercials. And, right. and then she went into real estate when she moved to California. Right, the real estate, right. And, and now she's um, back being a creative. And they complement each other so well when they were okay. guests yeah. a few weeks ago on the show. Yeah. Uh, they just, we had so much fun and, and so many laughs and people can go back in the archives to see that full episode. It was an extended conversation, but they just, they were almost finishing each other's sentences and they were yeah. applauding each other's, you know, successes. And, and that's a beautiful thing. You, you feel, I'm sure you feel doing this a lot of love and support around you, don't you Lee? I do. I, I, I do. And, and, you know, I've been, you know, I've known Anson a long time and, um, you know, to see him with his soulmate finally is just, Oh, it's beautiful. Isn't it? It's so beautiful. And, you know, Sharon was a widow, right. was married for a long time, had a wonderful husband, but unfortunately he passed away. And then Anson, um, was divorced and, and they, it's just a great love story. They met each other 14 years ago, initially. And maybe they talked about this. They probably did. I would, mm. uh, yes. Yeah. So you already know that. And then they didn't see each other for 14 years. For because, 14 years, right. Why would they? And, um, and then they both found themselves single at the same time. And that was it. And so... They've been married. It'll be a year in this May. I was at the wedding. It was such a wonderful wedding. I saw pictures. It looked like it was really something very special. It was very special. Doors and yeah. Fun and and um, just people from all different aspects all of their the, lives. Of their lives. They're, it was it was really so so working with them is a great treat. Tweet? Say tweet. <laughs> Treat. <laughs> say too many words so much now. Treat. <laughs> I won't ask you to say TikTok. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll never get through it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, although Michael, my my producing partner, is uh, is dreaming up some TikTok things for us for our Hollywood radio players that, that we've discussed before. We must yeah. talk about that too, because you know it's always good to 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 talk about that for people who are not, and there's the website. Um, 
tell us again, for those who are watching, who are not familiar with it, how this got started and how it got created and what it's all about. You know, it really is something fun and engaging and interactive and spectacular mm -hmm. and congratulations on it. Cause it just continues to grow. It does. And you know, um, it's, it's important to mention that uh, we do this to benefit the motion picture and television fund, That's which right. is for people who don't know, or you know what it is, but if they don't, it is an organization in Los Angeles. It's over a hundred years old and it helps take care of um, people in the, in the television and motion picture industry. And, and, uh, and it helps people in all strata of that, you know, where they are grips, whether they are, craft service, whether, if you don't know what I'm saying, look it up, yeah. <laughs> sorry. But- uh, the scenes people that really help to make it all happen. Yeah, yeah. teamsters and and, um, and actors and directors, producers, writers, and hairdressers and wardrobe people. I mean, it helps everybody because, you know, people fall in hard times and particularly the last few years with the pandemic and with our strikes, you know, people fell on very hard times. Oh, yeah. And they were, and the MPTF, Motion Picture and Television Fund, was giving, I forget the figures, something like a quarter of a million dollars a week hmm. to people who couldn't pay their rent, yeah. who couldn't buy, buy food for their families. I mean, it was it was dire. And so, people are still sort of struggling. trying to get their feet together, right? It's still yeah. a... Yeah, there's the still... residual is tremendous. It, it, it goes on and on. And it's very, it's been very hard, you know, the last, I'd say, four years. And But they've been around 100 years, and we really wanted to help them. So we have, and we do, and we will continue. We are on a hiatus right now of making new shows because, you know, we have to also work in their money. And so um, and we'll get paid for doing The light that. bill still comes, yeah. It still comes, right. And uh, Hollywood radio players, we, all that money, everything goes right to MPTF. It never crosses our our anxious palms. You know, you just, when you watch it, if you want to donate, you can, but you don't have to. But if you can donate something, it doesn't make any difference how much or how little, go ahead. There's a link on our website, hollywoodradioplayers.com, and also a link on our YouTube channel, Hollywood Radio Players, and you can donate there. Or if you can't, it's totally understand. We still want you to yeah. see the shows. Tell us about some of the folks who have been a part of the shows as well. Many names that the viewers will recognize some of their favorites. Hmm, I'm not sure about that. Well, there's me and there's Michael and there's, oh my gosh, there's uh, Gay Jones. There's, uh, and that's an interesting thing, just to do a little sidebar there. Gay, uh, Gay Jones, who is part of Hollywood Radio Players. And we did, uh, I think our last show was The Bickersons. And The Bickersons, for those of you who don't know, <clears throat> was a classic radio show back in the golden age of radio, as all our shows are, but our shows are visual. Mm -hmm. They are on Zoom and they are, um, and they're with today's actors. It's not a, a rerun, no. they're French. The Bickersons was way before Archie and Edith. <laughs> oh, oh, way, way before, way before, in thirties and the forties, and um, and again. So the sidebar is that Gay lives in Ojai. Sharon and Anson live in Ojai. That's right. And so, but they don't know Gay, but I know Gay, and um, and Gay uh, reached out to me, and, and then I brought Sharon and Anson in, and um, we are going to be doing our show. Crazy Mama in Ojai, if you happen to be in Ojai, California, cool. or anywhere within driving distance on November 17th to benefit the 80, 85th anniversary of something. <laughs> I can't think of what, but it's something about Ojai, maybe the city, it may be the theater. I don't know. Because he ran for mayor, I think, of that city, right? Mayor, yeah. not yeah. right. And, um, and that's okay. But he's community minded and gives it's back, awesome. right? Well, so. here's another thing about. Anson and me is that I'm very active in uh, in our our union SAG after well it's one of our unions SAG after and um, I'm very active and I've been in leadership for about ten years and I'm pulling back now because I want to I want to just work more yeah and um, but I certainly have served and so gosh it must be six or seven or eight years ago I recruited Anson to run for. Uh, 
convention delegate, and um, which is uh, a short commitment, but it's a very important commitment. Mm-hmm. Because every two years we have our convention, and and you have to have all these delegates to vote on all these issues, and they are imperative. So Anson, along with me and other people, he ran because, and he always tells a story about, and you made me run. It's like, of course I made you run. <laughs> and and he, I, and he has now run three different times and he has won every single cycle. Hmm. So, and, and, and he knows that I'm going to be expecting him to run again in 18 months or 16 months now. So uh, that's another thing that we have, that we have done together, which is really, really interesting. That's and fantastic, huh? Service, you know, yeah. You do a lot of uh, incredible things with so many fabulous people. I mentioned this. Look at that tri well, not trifecta. This is quadruple oh. here of incredible talent. And Margaret, Lee Purcell, Alice Arngrim, and Rosalind Kine. Tell us about uh, you guys ones. getting together. Um, this, I, I, this was I'm looking to see. What a great shot, too. Yeah, this was a. This is a great shot. This was. Oh man, this was a big event. It was something at, a, at the museum, Hollywood Museum. No, this was a big fan. It, it was at a hotel. Yeah, a big fancy hotel, and um, and we were all there to support. It was. They was. They were awards. They were. I think they were awards, but they were mm. like. I think there was journalism. Mm-hmm. Sure there was journalism and. Uh, you know, I see. Can you put that picture back up for a moment? Oh, sure. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I see um, Allison and Rosalind all the time. You do. Oh yeah, all the time. Yeah, they're wonderful, aren't they? Oh, they're really wonderful. And Anne and Margaret, I don't see that often. Yeah. I don't think she goes out much, you know. But right. But when she does, boy, does she make an impression. I mean, everybody's like, oh my gosh, there's Anne Margaret. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and all these women are just sensational, just, you know, talented, talented beyond belief and, and uh, very community minded, very giving, very loving. They're just great. They're just great women. Donna Pesco, she's going to be joining us in a couple of weeks. She's fabulous too. It's another great shot. And Donna is one of my dearest friends and, uh, and we are very supportive of each other and we see each other a lot. And actually, her husband and my husband get along really well, which is kind of rare. And so the four of us have a, a really good time, you know, going out to dinner and and so forth. And then Donna and I just have a great relationship, just great. Matt Damon in the house. Matt Damon in the house. That was that was for a movie that he did. Another great guy, just yeah. a great guy, fabulous. I think there was the outer space movie. I can't remember. You have been uh, surrounded by lots of incredible people over the years. Steve McQueen, of course. I know we talked about it the last time you were here and the wonderful yeah. deep friendship that you had with Steve. And Nobody just, likes Steve. Nobody. Right? Nobody. Yeah. Just really. There he is. Yeah. 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 It's funny because I recognize the wallpaper. Um, <laughs> I thought you would have said the shirt. <laughs> I it the shirt, and I recognize my cute little dress. You know, but it's funny. I recognize that wallpaper. Oh. Because it was it was actually Cork. That's that's his office. It was his office, and um, no, he was. You know, he he changed my life. We've we've discussed this. You know, he, yeah, yeah. He was a very special person. He left all of us far, way far too back. soon. Way too soon. Oh, Another yeah. one that did too is Kenny Rogers. Oh, no, I loved Kenny. Oh my gosh. You know? Uh, he was it great. Was a, it was another. And Richard Thomas, look at this. Richard is a very good friend of mine. In fact, I have to call him soon, ask him something. But uh, he's another great friend of mine. Oh, he's. Yeah, yeah. For, for all these years. For and all these years, yeah. I just love Richard. And oh, and there's wow. John, John and Kirk. And oh, yeah, I yeah, it's up there still. You have a photo up there, yeah, on the wall. No, no I have a, a letter from Kirk. Oh, Kirk Douglas, he, yeah. He wrote me about a year to two years before he died at a hundred and something. Oh, why? Yeah, he was great. Angela yeah. Lamsbury, oh. and this was a uh, Hallmark uh, movie. No, this was a move. No, this was uh, move, uh, murder. Well, they, 
Oh, they aired it on Hallmark. Yeah. Uh, they bought it later. Right? Later but on. Yeah. The, but it was, a, that was a murder. She wrote, it was a two parter. Right. I played a Southern woman and uh, <laughs> I was in the circus. What was it like working with Angela Lansbury? Well, I worked with Angela five, six times and uh, she was a, a queen. Queen. consummate professional yeah consummate and kind and and uh, and generous and you know later much much years later i went to see her in blythe spirit oh in, yeah in la and i had done blythe spirit but i had done it in england in a different role obviously and um so i went to see her in blythe spirit and by that time she must have been i'm gonna guess late 80s and uh, she, she was a, a woman, uh, and she um, played, I can't remember the character's names right now, but she, the woman on the bicycle, she, and, and she was doing like backflips onto a sofa. And Incredible, right? It, really, I mean, just so incredible. I went backstage afterwards to see her, and, and, um, and I was just like, my jaw was to the ground. You know, I was so I, like Angela. I mean, you're there being like an athlete and how, how did, you know, how did you, yeah. I mean, my gosh, you know, Gives I, it her all right. Her all, I can't do that. And she said, Oh my dear, we do what we must. <laughs> I thought, isn't that the truth? And that was her, that just summed her up right there. Just uh, right. It's just an automatic, uh, you, you rolled up the sleeves and you had to get it done. And that was the upbringing, the training and right for so yep. many of that time. You, okay. yeah. you were in uh closer magazine, huh? Yeah. You know, I just, I just got that. Right. Uh, Our buddy Harlan, congratulations on this. I just got that sent to me yesterday. Tell us what this is. This is exciting. Well, we'll look, we'll look for this. You know, I used to live in London and whole uh, spread everything. It's a whole spread. And I think there's a part one because yeah. I saw something that said, here's Lee's part two. And I thought, I, I didn't even know there was a part one. And <laughs> it's funny how that works, right? How that works. So Harlan's going to send me part one and I don't know what part one is about. <laughs> I remember giving this interview like many, many months ago and they wanted to know I think my favorite vacation spots and London is certainly because I'm, you know, I know it very well yeah, then, and yeah. um, and I live there and, and then I returned there year to year to year and year to teach. To, I taught there and at one of the festivals. And um, so, I, so I talked about London and different places you can go in London that are fun and you should look it up because it's, it, it's pretty informative. And is that something you'd like to do more of? Uh, type what? of thing, talking about places to go and destinations and sort of. You know, oh, I don't want to create a business out of it, but I, you know, I will certainly, if somebody else creates a business and <laughs> brings me we're to gonna, talk we're about it. see you hosting on HGTV or something or yeah, the Travel no. Channel. Yeah. Oh, maybe the Travel Channel. Yeah. Maybe the, although HGTV is my favorite channel. It is, you know, um, People say, oh, I watch Netflix. I'm like, I watch HGTV. <laughs> they did an incredible job renovating that Brady Bunch house, huh? Oh, oh my God. Yeah, because I know a bunch of those. Right. Things. And, uh, of course, grown adults. I know a lot of them. And um, yeah. We'd love yeah. to get Barry Williams on the show, Christopher Knight, all of them. You should. You talk to them, tell them, hey. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> You're welcome to join us. Yeah. I know the, grew up with them. I know the women better. Yeah. Uh, than I do the men. Maureen and uh, Eve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. Um, but I don't think that would be very hard. I think they'd yeah. love to come along and talk about it. And yeah. I think you should. I think that would be really great. Um, so then I think part one of Closer is I. they wanted to know, well, what in the United States? Because, you know, I can talk a lot about, you know, across the world, but uh, in the United States. And I said, well, Yosemite. Yeah. Because yeah. Yosemite, which is one of our beautiful national parks that wouldn't exist if it weren't for Teddy Roosevelt, they would all be yeah. condos. Right. You know, they, right. Would. they really would. And um, it's such a beautiful, and it's in California and it's not that yeah. far. Right? Have you been to South Dakota? I'm, a couple of weeks I'm headed to South Dakota <laughs> for a television project. I haven't. And I want to go there and I want yeah. to see, you know, the heads. The Mount Rushmore. Okay. And everybody, when I mentioned them being sent to, uh, 
that area to South Dakota for a television show series. And um, everybody was very, very excited. They're like, oh my God, South Dakota is absolutely beautiful. It's natural. It's stunning. You're yes. I love it there. And I can't wait to go. I, I, you're going, I think you're going to have a great time because everybody yeah. I know loves said it. the same thing, right? Same thing. And then I had one of my many cousins, uh, but one of my cousins um, said that, oh, we have a cousin there and um, and we need to go visit him. I, I think he was quite elderly at the time. Yeah. And I think now that's, you know, a few years, four or five years ago. I don't know if he's still there, but he wanted all of us. I mean, there's so many of us, but he wanted all of us to you know, come to South Dakota and visit me. And that didn't happen because of the, you know, pandemic. And, um, but I have always wanted to go and see Mount Rushmore. Mm -hmm. I want I, you must go see it when you're there. I know. Yes. You're working, right. Yeah. But you must go see it. Right. Yeah. You will, right? We're, we're going to schedule some time in between the work. Okay. I always like to, when we do that, to have a day or two, a play day or two in oh, between yeah. the filming to, to go and sight, see the areas, whatever the areas are. Yeah. Um, Why did you choose South Dakota? I'm just curious. Uh, that's where the guest is that I'll be interviewing. So it's, they reside in South Dakota. So oh. flying up West and uh, we were talking about it. I think it was like in February uh -huh. and they had said, no, you don't want to come here in February. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like Wyoming. You don't want to be here. Um, Come in like late April, early May. It's beautiful here. Things are starting to bloom. It's a right. lot warmer. It's the same thing like about, actually about a year ago this week, I was on another TV project and we were up in Edmonton, Canada for oh. a whole week with a oh, multi-day nice. shoot. And it was wow. fantastic. Wow. And originally that was going to be something that of last year, it was going to be like January. And they're like telling us, do not come to Edmonton in January. No, don't. You won't get out because uh, you know blizzards and everything. Alive, maybe. so we we did it like around this time where things were starting to you know defrost a little bit um but absolutely beautiful it was really people were nice in the restaurants oh. and we got to go to the uh, art gallery of alberta which was beautiful and city hall and meet the mayor we filmed at all these great locations and i love you know whatever wherever i go no matter what it is i always find these little nooks and crannies and i always learn about the area. I want to know what makes the area tick. What is it known for? What are the people like the food? And, and it doesn't have to be a major fancy city. It could be off the beaten path. Well, just to, those are more interesting. You take those stories and memories and feelings with you. Yes. Exactly. Um, this was something recent too, with you and Harlan, the whole gang, this is Gene Archery. Uh, well, this was, uh, yes. I tell you what this was. There it's I am. The museum. Yeah. I'm in the middle right there. You're right there. Well, we're in the theater. This is fabulous. That is the uh, Wells Fargo Theater, which is located at the Gene Autry Museum, which is a fantastic museum. Yeah. You must go see it if you haven't, if you're ever around there. And this was, um, there's a lot of my friends in that picture. It's just Jim Beaver. There's Stephanie Powers. Oh, we'd love to get her on the show. Wow. She's great. Yeah. Um, when you have coffee with her, <laughs> yeah, she's, she's amazing. Oh, she's there's who else is uh, Bruce Boxleitner, Bruce Davis. Uh, yeah, uh, it was a it was a real star study. This cat. is incredible, huh? It was incredible, and what it was is fascinating. So the guy is he in this picture? Kirk Ellis is he there? It's a little. I don't think I see Kirk Ellis. So Kirk Ellis is a writer and a historian and, um, and an academic and a great guy. And I had done an interview, uh, see this guy, well, Rob Word has on the, uh, I was gonna point at it as if you could see it. Yeah. <laughs> Rob Word is to Stephanie's left, if mm -hmm. you are um, in some, yeah. that, I don't know who the guy's on the right. And, um, but, so he's the tall one with the turquoise uh, shirt with the yes, hat. yes, yes, with, with right the next to her. Hat. So right. this was um, the culmination of his show of ten years. Wow! Uh, called um, a word on westerns. Ah! And everybody in this group had yeah. done an episode. Oh, there's Robert Pine. Mm -hmm. He's there. Oh, I can't see who else there. 
but everybody on this, <clears throat> because this was the swan song right. of that 10 year series, which you can see on YouTube yeah. called A Word on Westerns. And every, every week, I guess he would interview um, a different person who is affiliated with Westerns. I've done a lot of Westerns and everybody there has done a lot yes, of Westerns. You have. Yeah. And a lot of Westerns. And I used to rodeo, I rodeo for five years. And, um, and so when he, when it came time for him to end that 10 year series, he wanted to do something big. Special, and yeah. um, so Kirk Ellis, who is the writer I mentioned, he, gosh, um, he knew he was, he's writing a book about, about the writer of this script that we read. And, um, so they, so he had found a script called Ladies from Lonesome that when the writer, oh, what's his name? He's a very famous director. It'll come to me. Very famous director, writer, producer from the 50s, 60s, 70s. And he had passed away and Kirk was going through boxes of his, of his manuscripts. And he found this script that had never been produced and is not even quite finished. It wouldn't take much. You'd have to update it, but um, and and so I was there, and he said, you know, we want to do this, and I said, fine, I'll do it, and and then we got all all the they got all these other people to do it, all those people you see, and a few more that weren't there for the photo, and and so we did this reading of this story of these women back in the eighteen, sometime after eighteen sixty five, because after the Civil War, and um, and when people where cattle drives were very prevalent because the trains hadn't taken that over yet. Mm. And so these women who were ladies of the evening or you know, called soiled doves or whatever the vernacular was of the era had quit that profession and had become drovers, which is people who run cattle drives who do that. And um, so they did this huge cattle drive and it's the story about that cattle drive and it's really like a crazy story. It's just crazy. Hmm. So the women are running it and doing it, and the women are good at it. And and uh, and that was what we read. We read that script. It's a huge script. Yeah. So we did a staged reading of that script, hmm. and um, it was it was phenomenal. Now you are going to be able to see it in I don't know a few months probably because they they filmed it with three cameras. Oh, that's and great. Yeah, it's great, and uh, and it's going to be on. Uh, it's the finale to uh, Word on Westerns, and you'll and it's cut. It's going to be cut into. They're cutting it now, editing it. It's going to be a three parter, and uh, so you're going to be able to watch all those people you saw, and some of the people who weren't in the photo, and all of us doing this three part western, and it's pretty cool. That's fantastic, huh? Yeah, yeah, it really. Wow. Is. Yeah. What a that's that's legacy time there, huh? Building totally. that, celebrating it, paying homage to it. That's yeah. that's extraordinary. That was extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. extraordinary. And I hope that I hope it gets picked up and updated so that it could be a film. You know, or it could be it could be a streaming thing. It could be streaming on one of the rights, Amazon or Netflix, Tubi or any of them, right? Westerns are really hot again. They are. Yes. Yeah, it could be. It, it, it could be really. And I heard that bell bottoms are just behind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Did you, did you save yours? or? <laughs> yes. yes. See, you were smart. I have. Goes around, comes around. I, have, I think I have one pair left. <laughs> yeah. Did you save yours? Yeah, the, the, the glory of Vanderbilt. I had uh, was, it was Sergio Valente. Remember that? Oh, <laughs> Oh my! Yeah, I got my Calvin Klein. <laughs> Calvin, oh yeah, Calvin Klein. And you remember the? Um, it was Jordash. Jordash. Remember the jackets that were so popular that everybody was wearing? Oh yeah, what were they called? Yeah, it was <laughs> yeah, it was sort of like a. I know what was that yeah, called? Maker. A You're, very yeah. stylish, a very stylish, but but there was a particular brand that was so popular. Yeah. And I don't remember the name of that, but but men and women both wore them. Yes. The thing. They were really light it. and right and yeah, and like, so like a vinyl. I can't even what that t texture was, but yeah, that there was, was yeah, there was a name to it. Um, 
It was. Yeah. I don't know if I asked this. I may have asked this the last time you were on, but what the heck? Did we always get lots of new viewers watching around the world? We say hello to everybody that's watching live. I'm your host, Jim Masters, on the Jim Masters Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. Our special guest coming live from the West Coast. She's making her way to the East Coast for Crazy Mama. I will tell you oh. in a minute how you can get tickets. Lee yeah, Purcell yeah. is with us, uh, and it's such a beautiful time when Lee is here. She's a true delight. Thank when you. did you know that you wanted to dip into this world of entertainment and the arts? Was it as early as boom? Well, it's not me. <laughs> Literally. See, Lee, even then, <laughs> you even were a star. In the 1920s, I think you that's You were what... a star, and you're holding one. <laughs> well, maybe that's the 1800s. Um, <laughs> I don't know, but that's a really cute picture. Yes, it is. <laughs> yeah, she looks like um, that mm, that famous, famous actress who had Yes, that, I know who you're talking you know, about. Yeah. Uh, in the 20s, 30s. It was, it was before talkies. Right. She looks like, it's not me, folks. I it's, swear. It's not her. She looks like, you know, sounds like. <laughs> not me. Although. No, I didn't look like that. Were you always entertaining around the house? Were you always vivacious? And I started working at three. Three? I, professionally working as a model. I was a toddler model at uh, at um, the Neiman Marcus flagship. Flag. Oh, almost made a boo boo. At the Neiman Marcus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go back to tweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I was a toddler model. At the headquarters of Neiman Marcus, the yeah. main store. The main, the big, uh, <laughs> in it. Um, I was a toddler model at the age of three God. at the flagship store <laughs> of Neiman Marcus, uh, because at that point we were living in Dallas. Yeah. And uh, because, as I mentioned, we moved like a lot until oh. later. And then we became uh, stable, uh, but it was not as interesting being stable, but um, so I was a model and uh, it was my first paid gig was wow. when I was three. Great. And then we moved again. So that job was gone. And uh, when I was five, I think I got, uh, it, well, I wasn't paid for this as well as I remember, but it was a, it was in Memphis, Tennessee. And I, uh, it was a regional variety show. And I, I was on that for the first time at five. And then I did that sporadically for the next eight years. And, you know, it was very casual, goofy, corny thing, but it was really a great training because if you can survive that, mm. nothing phases you. I mean, right. nothing. And um, so we, we, we did a lot of those shows and, you know, I, they would call me up when I was a kid, they called my mother, could Lee come in and do you think she could do a little ballet? Sure. She'll do it. You know? And then as I got older, then they started calling me. And then as I got even older, I started calling them and saying, I have an idea. How about this? And they say, Oh yeah, sounds great. Come in and do that. So it's very casual. Um, but it was, it was, uh, it was, on television, it was on a set. Television, yeah. It was, it was, it was TV, mm -hmm. and um, and so I never had this thought. And I know that a lot of kids grow up and they don't know what they're going to do when they grow up. And I never, I never had the thought. It never crossed my mind. What am I going to do when I grow up? Because I was always doing it, and right. you, you know, work. I, yeah, I was working. So I, you know, I if I had lived in a in a in a place like Los Angeles or New York, you know, I would have had an agent. I would have, you know, been going on professional auditions. That would have been my life. But since I wasn't blessed with that, you know, I was, uh, I was, had to make up stuff. I had to do things on my own. And I started traveling with a traveling uh, entertainment troupe when I was 13. Hmm. And I was the, the dancer. And because uh, I started dancing at three and also in addition to modeling. And but by the time I was 13, I was pretty professional. And so I was traveling with this traveling troupe and I was part of the trio, the girl singing trios. And, um, and I'm not that great of a singer. And but, you know, <laughs> whatever. And uh, and then I was the choreographer and I was the dancer. And I also planned played 
in our little quartet. So we kind of did everything. And, and wow. I, yeah, it was great. And I also designed all my own costumes. And so that was fun. And um, yeah, there I am. <laughs> <laughs> you got that off the internet. I tell you, people that see this photo go, my, my God, your hair is awful. And I said, I, thought, I love my hair there. It's cool. Yeah. I, incredibly cool. Yeah. And you can just see what kind of a kid I was by, yeah. by that expression. It's like you're up to something. You're oh, you got something going. I was always you got up. something going. Always absolutely. I love that. This and that, is beautiful. That's this when is I, very nice. That's when I played um, Olivia de Havilland. Yes. And um, it's a and great it, shot. It was a mini series called. Um, it was about Errol Flynn, and it was yeah. called. Something about Errol Flynn, and of course yeah. Olivia and the Errol. eyes just draw you right in. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was, gotcha. yeah. it's a that's a duplicate. Um, that's a great I, shot of you. Yeah, there's a portrait of Olivia, and they took the portrait of Olivia and there. side by side, and they oh, and they made me look like that portrait. And really? Then, and yeah, and 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 then they took a, a portrait of me looking like Olivia in that portrait. Wow. And I actually have that. I own that. That's fantastic, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have it. They gave it to me when we finished. It was very nice of them. And sure. um, and I, I studied Olivia like very diligently because I didn't want to mess this up because right. Olivia okayed me to play her. Very important. Right? It was important yeah. for she me. To, you the, yes, uh, she okayed me. And okay. uh, and she sent her husband and her daughter. She lived in Paris for many, many years. And she sent her husband and her daughter to Los Angeles to meet me and to okay me. And, and they gave me the okay. She gave me the okay. And so I got to play Olivia de Havilland, who was you know, one of the greatest actresses of the golden age of Hollywood. Greatest, greatest act. And not only that, she was an activist when it was right. tough to be an activist. To be, right. Really for a woman. She was an activist. Who were some of the other people, you know, coming up the ranks over the years that you looked up to or that or at least inspired you along the way? Number one, Steve. Steve McQueen. Yeah. Number one. Always number one. Always first. Yeah. Oh, do you want to hear something really interesting? And, and this is not, it's kind of breaking news, but kind of. We've so, got a graphic for that. JMS exclusive. <laughs> do, it. Do, it. do it. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> hmm. I don't. She'll drink to that. <laughs> I but I don't see it. It's not on my screen. There it is. Oh, there it is. Okay, thank you. There you go. <laughs> my, uh, you know, water. Yeah, it's just the H two O. H two O. Good for the skin. Yeah. I don't know. Um, <laughs> she, got a, she got a big week coming up on the East Coast. Oh, <laughs> Um, so here, so we'll keep the earthquakes to a minimum. <laughs> please uh, have those, but don't have any like other things. Yeah, no, 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 nothing. Molly McQueen is Steve McQueen's granddaughter, and oh gosh, I haven't put anything on Facebook or anything about this yet because I just want to ask her, is that okay? Yeah. Um, so Molly and her darling husband, um, Molly is doing a podcast about Steve, her grandfather, oh, whom she never met. Right. Right. Because he died, you know, too young. He died seven years before she was born. And uh, Molly is uh, fabulous, just fabulous. And she, they had this cute little baby who's like about five months old now. And, uh, and they're just really wonderful people. So she uh, reached out to me and wanted, because I'm, I'm the only person he ever mentored. And uh, so she reached out to me and wanted to, will you come on the podcast? I said, absolutely. I'd love to come on the podcast. She had already interviewed um, Dustin Hoffman, um, Faye Dunaway, um, and, and just people of that ilk, right? right. And uh, so uh, so I, I did this about three, four weeks ago, I guess. And went to her house and um, she was very gracious. She, I'll come to your house. And I said, no, please don't. no. And um, so went to her house and she had a uh, this very famous photograph of Steve that I had seen, but not in person. And it's huge. I don't even, you can't even see my hands, but we're talking about maybe four feet high, mm. maybe about 
six feet long. It's this great photograph of Steve. He doesn't have his shirt on. His hair is cut short. And uh, for most of the time that I knew him, he had long, longer hair. The hair is cut short and he has a, a firearm that is in profile, profile uh, that he's pointing and yeah. And, but he's like this and he's, and he's, mm -hmm. it's just the coolest picture. And that is like, you walk in her front door and there it is. And then she has in another room, she took me to another room and showed me there's a wall of these great photographs of Steve and her and Steve's and then wife and her grandmother who is still with us and, and Molly knows her extremely well. Wow. And um, it's incredible, huh? Yeah, it was really incredible. So we talked for, I don't know, a couple of hours and they're going to make a composite podcast. So it won't be like, and here's Lee Purcell, her episode. Well, here's Dustin Hoffman. It's going to be subjects Clips and of each, right? Yeah. And subjects and what we all had to say about a particular subject of about Steve. So that's breaking news. That's a great idea, huh? I just loved it so much. I tell you, I cried through probably half of it. So it would have to stop. When did you first meet him? Um, I met him. Gosh. I was 21. Hmm. I met him. And he re really just changed my life. You know, just he was. Did, did he know that? Was he aware of how you felt? Well, later, sure. Yeah. You know, um, but at right. the time, you know, this was work. This is business. You know. Right. I mean, he took a huge chance on me. Right. Because I had never done a film, and I had had one line in a TV show, and I had because I couldn't dance because I got injured, so that I had to find a way of supporting myself. So I went back to modeling. I did that. And then for a but while. The way you said that one line. <laughs> I Trust did me. it. <laughs> he never saw it. Trust me. <laughs> no, he never saw it. no, I went, had to go through a, a very grueling series of auditions and screen and screen tests. And, um, and I met him about not at the third audition at all. I met him. I told you this story, but I met him um, one Saturday morning. Uh, I, I got a call to, uh, I think I'd done two auditions and the third was upcoming. And, uh, and I got a call uh, to come over on Saturday morning. Can you, can you come over? And I said, yeah, and I've been gardening. And I was like sweaty and dirty and you know, dirt under my fingernails. And I said, just give me an hour. I'll be there. They said, no, you have to be here in 10 minutes. Like, okay, well, you're, what you're going to get is, is what you're going to get. And I thought it was going to be a quick little trip over there to his office. And I was going to just run up the stairs and pick because they, they would change the audition material every time we auditioned. Right. Which mm -hmm. makes sense. And I thought, Oh, I'm going to get more, more, you know, more sides. And for those that don't know, that's what the scenes are that you do the audition from. And I thought, I'm just going to get more sides. I'll just say hello to the secretary and run out. Nobody will see me. So I run up the stairs and there's Steve McQueen. And, um, and that was interesting. And, and uh, he, w he was great. And it was Saturday morning. He was like in a sweatshirt and some old jeans and nobody was dressed up, thank God. And there was nobody there but him. And, and, and I was, I didn't, he was of my parents' generation. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have, I wasn't awestruck. I wasn't starstruck. I'd seen one movie of his. I'd seen Bullet, which was brilliant it still is right i hadn't seen anything else he had he had done i don't think he saved point. the day in the towering inferno he yes i don't think yeah it's the best movie i yeah. think papillon is his best movie personally oh yeah um and uh and so he just said let's let's talk you know and so it's like okay and we talked for about three hours and uh we had a lot in common a lot a lot a lot in common which is strange because i was like nobody and he was the biggest movie star in the world. And, but I rode motorcycles. I had a big motorcycle and, and I loved fast cars and didn't have one, couldn't afford one, but uh, until later then I did. Um, and, uh, and he of course had many cars and fast cars, which I later rode around in. And, and um, so he, yeah. And it just was a great, it just was, 
I don't, it was just great. He was like the father I never had. You know, he was like your favorite uncle, like right. your big right. brother. You know, it was that. Looked out of, for you and cared. And yeah, and taught me a lot, you know, a lot. And he held a gigantic press conference for me, you know, to introduce his protege, you know, to international press, probably 500 journalists there. It's very overwhelming, and um, and it was just great. It was great, and then and and then you know he went off to do Le Mans, and I I moved to Europe, and um, so well, you know that was you know that, but he he changed my life. So he he's number one in my book. And Molly knows that, right? Oh, she knows the whole yeah, story. Yeah, she knows the impact that he made oh, and how yeah, you feel. Know. Yeah, she knows. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah, he knows everything, and um, and she looks a tiny bit like him, mm. a tiny bit. She's she's very beautiful. Yeah, and she's uh, quite tall, and she looks. I mean, she's she's uh, also been an actress, but now she's more interested in producing. Him. Yeah, but she's very very beautiful, and uh, and she lo she looks like a like a model. Mm. You know, she's really gorgeous, and her husband's really handsome, and they have this beautiful little baby. So it, you know, it's great. I, I really hope they have a wonderful life, you know, going yeah. forward. And it looks to me like they will. Absolutely. Yeah. Why do you love doing what you do? You've done it a long time. You're stuck with it. The ups and downs, the craziness, the blood, sweat, and tears. You're still at it. You're flying to these coasts. I mean, what is it about it that still draws you in? Well, you're one to talk. <laughs> you're the same way. I could I could turn that around and ask you the same question, but this is not my show. <laughs> but, um, we'll do that the next time you can interview me. Oh, when, I, you, when you come back the fourth time, there will be a fourth. I would yeah. really actually we can do love that. It. Sure, I would love we'll have that. to put a pot of coffee on for that one. <laughs> I, I I'm going to hold you to that because I would love that, and I think that all of your millions of listeners and viewers would love that too. Let me interview you. Gosh, that would be great. You know, oh my gosh, I don't even remember the question you asked me. I got so excited. Blessings and joys and what keeps you wanting to well, stay connected and doing this incredible work? Well, you know, what else am I going to do? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people say, I still have bills, Jim. <laughs> I, I, I still have a, a drive. You know, I'm still, you know, extremely passion and yeah. And I still right. want to, there's still things I haven't explored, like playing 16 characters. And, um, you know, I mean, that's something I haven't, I haven't done. I've done a lot of different characters, but I haven't played 16 characters, you know, when they are talking to each other and I haven't done that before. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. And, and actually, when I saw this and this, in this, now I'm going back to talking about Crazy Mama, but mm -hmm. it does feed into your question. But, you know, I see things, you know, I see, pro, you know, movies and television shows, plays, whatever. And if I sometimes I'll, I'll just enjoy it as an audience member, although it's really hard for me to be an audience member because I start dissecting. Things. You see everything that's going on and right. Yeah, and I'm like, why'd they do that? Yeah. And I, I, I just put on my producer. You need more light on that person. And exactly. <laughs> yeah, I get very technical about it. So it's kind of hard for me to to just be an audience member. I, I actually would love it if I could be. But um, about a director producer. Yeah, because I do direct and I do produce. And but I do. Uh, so when I saw this, it kind of fed into my my drive mm -hmm. because um, first of all, I was deeply emotionally affected just so deeply and um and then the thought crossed my mind you know gee i would really love to do this someday this i didn't know someday was going to be two months later but i'd really love to do this someday and um and and here i am you know doing it and so what what takes i just you know i don't knit <laughs> I, <laughs> I i don't i don't like to cook um I don't have any grandchildren. Um, I I don't do macrame. Um, <laughs> I don't go on cruises. And um, do you play bingo? <laughs> I played bingo once on the only crew cruise I ever went on on my life. Which you know, Michael, my production partner, he does. He he's been on twenty nine cruises. Wow. 
he goes on cruises all the time. He all loves the time. It. Yeah, he loves it, huh? Like it's my way of getting away, you know. Anyway, um, I did go on one cruise once in my life many, many years ago. I had a good time. Um, and I was it was like a short, like a three-day, you know, thing. And I paid, played bingo, and I won $100. Wow, see? I'm telling you, see? I should go on more cruises. <laughs> yeah. I think you should play more bingo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. You know. I, I just, I just love to work. Yeah. That's basically it. I know other people are like, oh, I can't wait till I retire. I'm like, no, you want something, right? Because, but I understand it. Yeah. If you have done the same profession, career, job for many, many years, and then you have a, a chance. You're 65, whatever, and now you have a chance to do what you really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you're just tired, right? You know, and you just want to relax. I I do understand it. It's just not my, it's not yeah. my thing. Right. But, you know, I understand it. I mean, I have I I have people I know not very well, but I have people I, that have retired, and um, I I get it. I I actually do get it. It's just not what I want to do. It's right. You I just want to. I want to work. Stay connected and right. Yeah. Right, and tell stories and share, and yeah, and, and Crazy Mama is an extraordinary undertaking, and you know, with this understanding of all these different characters that you are playing, which is going to be, folks, you got to go. We've got a couple of different ways we can show you. Show we you. have you can get right there. You can go to BethelWoodsCenter.org events detail Crazy Mama right there on the screen. Write that down. That's direct. This is where this the Center for Performing Arts is uh, is well known, and this is the the grounds of uh, the area of Woodstock. It is where Woodstock happened, and also there's Ticketmaster too. You go to all that so with the question mark and the queue and the crazy and all that. Take a, uh, pic take a there, picture. With your take phone. a picture of that, folks. Ticketmaster.com to get direct in there to get those tickets. It's happening in Bethel, New York. Bethel and. Wood. Yeah, Bethel Woods, New York, and uh, it's a fabulous area. It's very scenic, and uh, it's not all the way up in Buffalo or Rochester. It's it's uh, maybe about I'd say forty five minutes, maybe from the Connecticut, uh, you know, border, and and you know, easy up from New York City and other areas. So ninety gonna, minutes, ninety yeah, minutes from from, this, from Manhattan. Yeah, yeah, and there's the Bethel Woods uh, Center dot org to get those <laughs> tickets. Take a picture of that, folks. Yeah, forward slash events, forward slash detail. Crazy hyphen or dash mama. And it's going to be something terrific. And, of course, hollywoodplayers.com, which we talked about. Lee Purcell, that is the ultimate place for everything there as well. Um, I know you're busy. you got a lot going on. I don't want to keep you too long. But congratulations on this. I know you're going to knock it out of the park. Can't wait to see it in action. And uh, I'll see you. I'll see you after, right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Right. I know there's a, um, after every performance, there's a Q and a for the audience with the three of us. And right. I, I want to see you, you know, they're going to have cheesecake or something for us, aren't they? Or we'll bring the cheesecake, <laughs> but I do know that, I don't know. And, and I'm not going to it because I can't eat before I perform, but no, no, no. They're having a wine and cheese like reception before the first night, but I won't be there. Anson and Sharon will be there, but I, I can't, you know, can't yeah. do that. Yeah. yeah. So, um, well, you've got, I mean, which of the, you know, you're not going to follow a show up. <laughs> You'd have to go in and out of the door. Yeah. And our next guest, <laughs> could you imagine? Oh my God. Why do you see the program? I'm not going to tell you, but it's really unique. It's going to be something. It's really, really unique and um so i look forward i actually have to go meet with sharon now but i, I we said hello give her our love and anson hello. as well and uh, i did tell them both that you were coming they were thrilled oh fantastic Karen, please tell them to say hello absolutely and, and uh spread the word to your friends some of those names we'd love to welcome them to our show and have a little chat okay. it's always sure. a pleasure and uh, you are a delight and as much <laughs> as you are you know, uh, somebody who has earned her keep and her place in this business. You're a very, very kind and nice and 
compassionate person and always a pleasure to chat with uh, Lee oh, Purcell. And you're welcome you. back here all the time and at I'm any time. I'm interviewing you. That's right. But I am going to hold the you. The tables will turn. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed the time with me as much as I have with you. It was great. Thank you, Jim. It's always, always a pleasure to be with you. And I really in, I look forward to interviewing you. And as I told you, my dad told me when I was seven, whenever anybody says something kind or nice to you, always thank them, Jim, and then ask them to please put it in writing and address it management. <laughs> I just love that. Oh my Isn't that God. a great line? That is a great line. I'm gonna you uh, be well. I know you got to rest up. You got a lot of work to do, so we don't keep you too oh. long. But a real pleasure, my friend. And we'll uh, we'll see you in a week, and then you're welcome back anytime you like. Oh my God. Oh my God. I know. Well, in a few days, what a, you know, in due time, in due time. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't remember how to get out of here, but I think you no, are. Well, well uh, yeah, you just, uh, you just exit, exit studio. Yeah. You leave studio, but we'll, we'll do it first. So it's smooth. Thank you. Thank you. So, so Lee Purcell. Hello to everybody. If you're on the all East. All the Lovities. Yes. All the Lovities come see my show. Absolutely. It's going to be great. amazing. Our Sharon and Anson will be there. It's going to be wonderful. Yep. You be well. Safe travels, Lee. Okay. I appreciate it. And and don't get into any earthquakes. No earthquakes and no hail. <laughs> <laughs> to hell with the earthquakes. <laughs> okay. Bye for now. Bye bye. Take care. Thank you. Lee Purcell on the Gym Masters Show. What a great conversation. And we're going to tell you again how you, if you're on the East Coast and the Northeast, I uh, can get tickets to see something really special. And it's going to be a trifecta of amazing powerhouse talent and entertainment. Lee Purcell, Anson Williams, directing, and his lovely wife, writer. This is based on her memoir. This is Sharon Scott Williams, Anson, and Sharon. If you're just joining us late, uh, they were recent guests here on the Gym Masters show. If you didn't see that uh, really incredible episode, uh, where we talked about Crazy Mama. We also talked about Sharon's background and and Anson was very open about his life. We also talked about the 50th anniversary of Happy Days. That's hard to believe. Check that episode out in the archives. Anson Williams and Sharon Scott Williams were here. And uh, and of course, on this episode, and there they are, of course, the three of them, Lee, Anson, and Sharon together. And again, as I mentioned, we thank our special friend. This is the third time. We love when guests want to return to our show to share new updates, exciting news, and fun things that are happening because we always try to make a nice, warm, fun uh, place for them to come and just have a good time with us here on our Entertainment Lifestyle Celebrity Talk Show Series. This is Lee Purcell right here on the Gym Masters Show. Thank you for joining us as well, everybody. Uh, why don't we put up on the screen again ways to get the tickets to see Crazy Mama you can go to the uh, website there, the BethelWoodsCenter.org. Go direct, take your little screenshot there, Ticketmaster as well. And again, now, if you're watching this episode, you know, a year from now, this is all past tense, but uh, we're coming at you in a timely manner so we can tell you about this uh, fabulous show, this play that is coming up in New York. And um, then it's going to be in Ojai as well on the West Coast. So, you can find out about that and they hope to take it elsewhere, you know, all over. And uh, that's really, really cool. So there's the ways to get it. And of course, LeePurcell.com, the website, one more time, Hollywood Players, uh, Hollywood Radio Players.com. And I think that's so great because it goes to the fund, uh, giving back to the community. I think that's such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Thanks to everybody for all of these great comments. You know, they're talking a lot about the earthquake uh, in the Northeast, we didn't feel it here. Or at least I didn't feel it. Um, although I was, you know, I was getting a haircut in styles this morning and I had a couple of radio shows. So I was on the air, so I didn't feel any moving and shaking, but a lot of other people did. It was a 4.8 earthquake in the Northeast United States, uh, centered in New Jersey and then sort of uh, radiating out from there. Interesting. And then Lee was saying, they were on the West Coast. They had hail. I mean, <laughs> crazy times, folks. Let's stay together through it all here on the Gym Masters Show. Always cool when you're with us. We uh, thank our friend Lee Purcell. 
iconic actress extraordinaire joining us here on the program and we thank you and you and you and you spread the word tell everybody you know about our show uh go back in the archives check out some of our amazing past episodes we would love for you to do that and if you enjoy this episode and all the episodes you enjoy we ask that you spread the word don't keep it a secret and give this episode a like there's a thumbs up like icon on our youtube channel click like share this episode in your social media interact with us leave a comment on our channel and don't forget to subscribe to our youtube channel jim masters tv and click that little notification bell icon so you'll keep abreast of all these great episodes and shows and what time they're on because we do them uh, at a lot of different times now based on our guest schedule and my crazy schedule and tv and radio and so much more thanks for stopping by if this was your first time uh, watching our series it means the world to us come back and see us again and if you're one of our faithful who watches all the time thank you so very very much thanks for all these great comments that are coming in here in the chat room everybody's saying they love lee and great and thank you we appreciate that you guys are the best uh all of our faithful viewers and the new subscribers and new viewers who have been stopping by watching here at the gym master show we say thank you very much for being with us and come see us again uh, as well. A big thank you to everybody for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, uh, share, and subscribe. doesn't cost anything when you subscribe as well. All right. Take care of one another. Be good to one another. Come see us again on the Jim Masters Show Live. I'm your host, Jim Masters. Thanking you for your time this time. Till next time, love one another. Take care of one another. Don't forget to take care of and love yourself. Thanks to Lee Purcell. And thanks to you for watching and enjoying. See you on the next episode. Be well and cheers. Mm -hmm.